a Sunday evening in early November and we're just catching the back end of a storm blowing through. Down at ground level it's not too bad, a bit windy, but up at the top of Kinder it's fairly horrendous. A couple have been trying to do a circuit of the plateau and they've just walked out onto the western edges and facing the full force of the gale now. Um, they phoned us to say that they're exhausted, cold and can't continue. It's now dark and they're struggling so that we've asked them to stay put while we send people up to help. Kinder 1 have gone ahead of us. Um, they've gone up through Sandy Hayes and are likely to get to the casualties first. Um, we're going along as backup, um, taking a longer, flatter route um, but hoping to catch them up. So at some point shortly we're hoping to catch up with both the casualties and Kinder 1 and hopefully escort them all off. Fortunately for us, the casualties have been able to give us a what three words location that they've got from their mobile phone. We've managed to convert that into a grid reference and put that onto our mapping. And so we've got a pretty reasonably confident uh, location for these people, which puts them somewhere in between Sandy Hayes and the top of Ashram Head. Um, so we've got a, a fairly good idea where they're going to be. If this had turned out to be a search, it would have taken us all night to try and find them in these conditions. But as it is, it looks like we're just going to go straight to their location. It's on for that we can walk. He hasn't he's certainly not close enough to make a decision. All he said last his last message was as soon as they get to them, if they can walk, they're gonna push for lower ground as quickly as possible. make a decision once they get off the top of the this finally catch Kinder 1 up who are now escorting the two casualties off the hill. They've given them some of our spare jackets which is why they're wearing MR kit but I've highlighted them in blue here so you can see who they are as we go through the rest of the video.
down okay now. Um, I think in the end it was really just the lady was completely exhausted. Um, understandable, the conditions were brutal. Um, wind was just literally picking you up and throwing you off your feet sideways. Um, so I think she just had been in, out in that for hours and I just couldn't go on any further. Uh, from our point of view, we were really pleased that she was able to walk down. Um, we were obviously doing our best to encourage her as much as possible. Um, our options were really limited. I think we would have struggled to get a helicopter um, in those conditions um, for anything that, was, uh, that wasn't life and death. Um, if, we, if she hadn't been able to walk, our other option would have been a stretcher carry. But I think if we'd have been um, trying to put the wheel onto the stretcher, because we have a wheel that goes underneath the stretcher, that would have made the whole process easier for us to, for us to carry her off. But it would have just been so difficult in that wind. I think it would have just blown it over sideways. So I think we wouldn't have even attempted the wheel, which meant it would have been a long, slow stretcher carry um, down the paved path route, um, which is quite narrow. So generally all the people on the sides of the stretcher end up off the path and knee deep in mud and kind of going up and down so it would have been really slow so difficult as it was for her to walk down it was by far the better option so we just supported her gave her plenty of food warmed her up um, I think you probably noticed in there we the, both casualties were wearing some of our gear just to keep them warm um, so that's fine we got them down um, one of our guys Jim is just giving them a lift round back to Edale now in one of our vehicles uh, he's going to drop them off at their accommodation and then head back and garage our vehicle and that's us for tonight very interesting very wet very windy car